Hello, this is Jim with the IT department at Pella Schools. This video is intended to help district staff in setting up the application called Land School on their teacher machines to manage one-to-one -one student laptops in their classrooms. Some questions that I will try to answer for you today include, what is Land School? What things can I do with Land School? How does Land School work? And finally, how do I install and set up Land School on my school computer? So, what is Land School? Land School is an application that runs on both student and teacher machines, enabling teachers to monitor and manage one-to-one -one student devices in their own classroom. Okay, well what does that mean? In other words, what can I do with Land School? Land School is a powerful tool that teachers can use for many different purposes, including view or control an entire class of student computer screens, allow or block specific websites or applications during class, create, distribute, and grade electronic tests automatically, take a class survey and get instantaneous feedback, distribute or collect homework for an entire class electronically, display a teacher or student screen on all student devices, for example, during a class presentation, or to completely disable the keyboard, mouse, and screen of all student devices in a class period for example, during your lecture when you want to make sure everyone is paying attention. These are only some of the great features available when using Land School. If you are wanting to do any of the abilities mentioned in the list, then Land School is the tool for you. But first, you need to know a little bit about how Land School works. In its simplest form, Land School is as easy as changing the channel on your television at home. All student computers are automatically assigned to be on channel 1 and all teacher computers are assigned a unique channel number. When a class period begins, all students in that class are pulled from channel 1 by the teacher into their teacher channel. The teacher that owns the channel 2222 now has control over each student in her class that has been assigned to her channel. At the end of class, she dismisses her students. When a class is dismissed in land school, it releases all students in the teacher's channel back to the default student channel, channel 1. Students then go to their second period class. In this example, let's say that two of the students go to class with a teacher whose channel is 3333, and the other two students go to class with a teacher whose channel is 4444. Each teacher would then pull their respective students into their unique channel. At the end of second period, those teachers again dismiss their students who then go right back to the default student channel number one. If a teacher accidentally forgets to dismiss a class of students from land school, it isn't a big concern. A teacher has the ability to pull a student into his or her channel from another teacher's channel. The previous teacher would just get a notification message that another teacher took students from her channel. Okay, I can tell that you are super pumped about using land school in your classroom. So, let's install and configure it from self-service. What we'll do is download the application from self-service, set the land school server IP address, not as bad as it sounds, I promise, set your unique teacher channel depending on your building and room number, learn to create and manage class lists of student computers, lock the application in your dock, and then show you how to disable or keep land school from opening automatically when you log in which is the default behavior. Yikes, that may have sounded confusing or, or overwhelming to you, but don't worry. I bet we can do all of this easily in less than 10 minutes. I'll show you how. The computer that I will be using for the demonstration will be similar to Mark Solomon's at the high school. I need to be logged into a teacher account on this laptop in order to see that teacher's classes in land school, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Open self-service and go to the Apps on Demand category. Scroll down until you find the Land School Teacher application. Click Install. This will spin for a minute or two until it finishes installing the appropriate files. The Land School Teacher icon will start bouncing in your dock. When self-service finishes the install, we can close it out and click on the Land School icon in your dock. 
you can safely check the box and hit cancel to avoid registering for alerts and updates. You shouldn't be asked again when Land School opens next time. You'll see a gray window now, which is what you see when you have no classes loaded in. The buttons you see across the top provide many of the management abilities I mentioned previously, such as testing, surveys, and student device control options. I will refer you to some instructional video tutorials at the end of this demo to learn how to use each tool effectively. But right now, we need to go to the Teacher menu item in the top right menu bar and select Preferences in the drop-down. In the Network tab on the far right corner, click the third radio button for IP-directed broadcast. In the first text field below it, type in the IP address 1010.250.93. That's 10.10.250.93. This will be the only time that you'll have to set this. This is the server address that sits between you and communicates with your teacher computer and the student computers. Lastly, on the bottom left of this screen, type in your unique teacher channel number. Your channel is simply your room number plus your land school building code. All high school teachers will use the building code 1000 and middle school 2000. So, if you were in room 201 in the high school, you would type in 1201, 1000 plus 201. If you are in middle school room number 305, you would type in 2305. If you share rooms with other teachers, be sure that you communicate and ensure that there is only one teacher assigned to each channel number. A channel number can be any number between 2 and 16,000, but please, follow the guidelines previously given for ease of management. So, for Mark Solomon, who is in room number 206 at the high school, I will type in 1206 and press OK. We have now fully configured the application settings for Mark Solomon's computer. Next, we will look at loading students into class lists. We will need the class list button, which is located further down the line of buttons along the top of the main console window. We can move any of these buttons by holding the command key and then click and drag the button where you want it. Click on the class list arrow button. A drop down list appears with several options. Click the first item, manage class lists. This screen is where you would go to create your own class lists. If you click browse for students, a window opens showing all available student computers in the bottom window. Click to highlight a student machine and select Add to move them into your class list. You can select multiple students by holding down the Shift key and clicking. When you're done, press Save. This takes you back to the original class list window where you can select Save Again. It's asking you now where you want to store the file that contains this student list information. Browse and save anywhere you want. Okay, so now that we have saved a static class list, we can now load that class list into our teacher channel. Select the drop down arrow again by class list and select load class list. Find the file that you just saved and open it. This pulls all students in that class list into Mark's teacher channel. We can toggle the view between the student's screen and information. In the line-by-line -line list of computers, we can see basic information including the currently running application and the last website they visited. To reiterate from the slideshow earlier, what just happened is that these students were previously in Channel 1 and were all pulled by Mark's computer into his unique teacher channel, Channel 1206. So, Mark can now observe and control each of these students' screens using the management tools across the top of the Land School application. Again, I will refer you to additional tutorial videos that cover each of these abilities in depth. At the end of each period, we need to dismiss the class, which will release the students from Mark's teacher channel back to channel 1. We will go back to the class list drop-down arrow and simply choose Dismiss Current Class. The students are now back in channel 1 and are ready to be pulled by their next period teacher. 
You might be thinking right now, loading student lists for each one of my classes by hand would be a huge pain, right? Well, fortunately, the IT department was able to export student schedules out of Infinite Campus and use them to load class lists automatically for you. I'll show you how to do that right now. When you initially installed LandSchool, it created a folder in your applications directory named LandSchool. We have a subfolder named Pella Files that contains two CSV files, files with comma-separated values. One file contains a list of teachers and their classes, and the other contains a list of students and their associated classes. Go back to the class list arrow dropdown. Select the item Load Dynamic Class List. Click the Choose button in the pop-up window. We need to specify where these two CSV files are located. Navigate to the Applications, Land School, Pella Files directory, and press OK. Press OK once more, and you should now see a list on the left side window of all of your class periods with their unique course and section ID. These should be the same unique ID as an Infinite Campus. Each class contains a list of students in the right side window. Choose a class and press Load to pull these students into your teacher channel. You now should have full management abilities for this list of students. The method just explained to you is the recommended process for your daily teaching routine to save you time. Again, class list, load dynamic class list, choose the class, and load. Just to clarify, the reason we are only seeing this subset of classes is because we are logged into this computer as Mark Solomon. LandSchool looks at the teacher's user account to determine which classes to display in this window. The two files we are using to load students into your classes should be refreshed daily from Infinite Campus. So, if a student changes his or her class schedule or joins the school district today, then they should show up in the correct class lists tomorrow. If you don't think that you have the latest class list information, you can open self-service and go to the maintenance category. Click Download for the policy named Download Land School Files. This can be done from anywhere within the school district and will retrieve the latest versions of the two files needed for dynamic class lists. If you want to keep the Land School teacher application in your dock, simply right click on the dock icon, go to Options, and then Keep in Dock. Land School will open every time you log in by default. To turn this feature or annoyance off, go to System Preferences, Users and Groups, highlight your account, Login Items, highlight the Land School line on the item list, and then click the minus sign below. You may have to unlock the padlock to make these changes. Land School will now no longer start up automatically when you log in. To learn more about the other features available in Land School, you can watch short video tutorials on the company's main website. Go to landschool.com slash support slash tutorials. We urge you to explore these videos before filling out a help desk ticket asking about how to do something in Land School. We appreciate your time today in learning about Land School and how to set it up on your school computer. This has been a Pit Crew production.